what I'd like to do in this video is continue our conversation about how we identify the strength of uh, timber products that we're using in our structures. Uh, thus far, we've talked about uh, species and grading. As you can see here on the screen, I've got that's one of the important elements that we're checking here. And if you go back to table 5.2 in your textbook, you'll notice that there's three different species identified. There's Douglas fir larch, north, southern pine, and hem fir. And uh, those are three different types of species of timber products that we commonly use here in the United States. You'll also notice that each of those is broken down into two different grades. So we've got number one and number two. And those grades are often due to the defects, uh, the density. Um, it, it refers mostly to the quality of the, the material that were being used. Not so much the quality of the uh, timber species, but rather the quality of each individual log and uh, the way that it's um, uh, manufactured at the, the lumber mill. So uh, the, the third category that we want to talk about after species and grading is classification. And this has to do with size. Remember last time uh, we met, I talked about that I didn't like that this textbook just sort of neglects the size factor. And today I want to introduce um, what happens as we uh, classify timber products according to their different uh, sizes. And so we break the classification or the size classification down into four different categories. I'm only showing three on the screen. Uh, we've got dimension lumber, beams and stringers, posts and timbers. And then the fourth category has to do with horizontal sheeting elements. And it's sort of a unique category, one that I don't think we need to, to, to go into today. We'll, we'll stick more with uh, elements that are used in our beams and our columns and uh, our, our walls, etc. Um, when we're done with this quick video, you should be able to, uh, given a size of a member such as a 2x4 or a 6x12, identify which of these different classification categories it fits into. So let's jump right in. With dimension lumber, dimension lumber tend to be the smaller elements. They include two buys, three buys, and four buys. So if you have a two by four, a two by six, a two by ten, etc., that is considered dimension lumber. Three buys aren't as common. You don't go down to Home Depot and typically buy a three by four, but occasionally they're specced out and occasionally they're manufactured and they're considered dimension number as well. Four by fours, four by sixes, four by eights. Again, the whatever represents the, the latter dimension there. Those are also considered dimension number. Now, what do we commonly use dimension number for? We use it in our walls for studs. We use it in our roofing elements for rafters. We use it in our floor elements for joists. And these are probably the three most common applications that we would see in structural um, lumber elements. And again, two buys, three buys, and four, four buys being used in these instances, um, dimension lumber. One other thing that I would like to note is the smaller the member, the closer the spacing between members typically tends to be. So uh, you're dealing with two by four, two by sixes. You're oftentimes dealing with spacings on the order of 16 inches to 24 inches. Uh, when you get uh, into the four by members, the spacing can be a little bit larger, but still in the big scheme of things, relatively close together. When we're talking about bigger elements, five bys, six bys, etc., then we jump down into these other two classifications. And to make a distinct difference between those two, beams and stringers tend to be rectangular, and posts and timbers tend to be square, or what I'll call nearly square. So we're talking about the cross section here. Um, we tend to load rectangular elements along the narrow face, which means we're loading it along the strong axis. Quick question, why would we do that? What is the benefit or uh, what, what does it do to the strength of our member when we do that? If you uh, are thinking about the moment of inertia or the shape stiffness, that would be the correct answer here. What we've done is we've taken and we've moved 
that material away from the neutral axis in the vertical direction, which uh, makes it a stiffer shape, perfect for uh, beam type elements. So one thing to note here is that beams and stringers tend to be used in horizontal applications. The size of these, as indicated a little bit earlier, tend to be five bys or six bys. Um, but to make them rectangular, what we do is we make sure that the depth of the cross section is at least two inches bigger than the width of the cross section. So a five by seven or larger, five by eight, five by nine, those would be rectangular in nature. Six by, add two inches for the depth, and it would be a six by eight or larger. And of course, these continue down to seven bys, eight bys, etc. And so um, th these can be larger than those as well. But those would be examples. So if I have a six by seven, that would uh, be nearly square. That's not rectangular in nature. That would be considered a post or a timber. So using that logic right there, posts and timbers tend to be five by fives or five by sixes, six by sixes, or six by sevens, and of course we can continue down with larger uh, members as well. What is the benefit of having a member where the depth and the width are nearly identical, meaning the depth and the width of the cross section? Well, Think back to, uh, again, the shape stiffness. We, we don't get the benefit of having a strong axis. And so these members tend to be vertical in nature. The reason being, when a column buckles, um, it's going to buckle in the weak axis. And if both axes are essentially the same, then what we're doing is we're maximizing the efficiency of the member that we're using. So in summary here, you got dimension lumber, beams and stringers, posts and timbers. Um, dimension lumber are the smaller elements. Beam stringers, posts and timbers tend to be the larger timber elements. The rectangular shaped ones tend to be used in horizontal or beam applications. And the square rectang squ sorry, square cross-sectional members tend to be vertical in nature. Just one quick reminder for you. We've got this idea of true dimensions versus nominal dimensions. A nominal dimension would be like a two by four. And in reality, if you go by a two by four, it doesn't actually have a two by four cross section. The cross section would actually be one and a half by three and a half inches and therefore the true dimensions are less than the nominal dimensions. Just one quick reminder that the charts tend to be based on the true dimensions. If you're looking at the area, the moment of inertia, the section modulus, uh, the, the structural properties, they are based on the true dimensions even though the charts typically refer to them as the nominal dimensions.